Tony here. So if you're subscribed to this channel and you follow the content, chances are you'll know that many of the videos I try to shine a light on those things that maybe are not too well known, whether it's playing light gun games with your Oculus Quest controllers or finding mods for the Oculus Quest that aren't that well known or relatively undiscovered side quest gems. And this video is similar in the sense that I'm going to look at VR Jam 2020. This is a competition where single or group entries have to make a VR game within seven days and it has to relate to a particular theme and then that game is judged based on a range of criteria. So in this video I'm going to explore my top games for the Oculus Quest from this year's VR Jam. Now bear in mind these games were made in seven days and while they are fantastic of course being made in seven days they're not necessarily the most polished or long lasting experiences. But at the very least, what you'll get to see from this video is awesome talent and some really interesting ideas and concepts that you might have never seen in VR before. If you want to try these games for yourself, visit the website, link in the description below, go into submissions, then filter it by Android games, and these games should all be compatible with the Oculus Quest. So the first game I'll be looking at today is called Light the Way. Now this game is created by Jamie Colazzo the third and Ken Lang. Hope I pronounced those names right. And your goal is to make your way to the sheriff's station using firelight. Now you need this firelight not only to light the way, but to also keep the monsters away. Now this firelight eventually goes out. So you need to find the next torch quite quickly otherwise it's game over. There's a total of six non-player characters in this game and they can follow you. Although finding them is completely optional, it's a nice added challenge. I like this one for the unique concept, the visuals also look pretty nice and it offers challenging and fun gameplay. The next game is TV Magic VR. Now this was created by Amar, Enrico, Gabriel and Michael. So in this game, you play a game within a game. So you use this NES controller to control this character on on screen but what i think makes this game very special is that you can use the items around you to assist you in reaching that gold coin so i'm using this block here to act as a ledge by sticking it on the screen and now my character can jump onto it to reach the goal you also use the dart as a weapon to destroy enemies i had a lot of fun playing this game it's very innovative and there are a few levels for you to try out next we take a look at the mix-up now this is an innovative puzzle game created by manuel paris alina winger and lisa lauer you play as the soul of a talented professor a mishap has happened during your last lab test and your goal is to try to get everything back to normal. To help you do this, you have a special tool. It's kind of like a syringe, and what it does is it extracts the essence from an item and helps you to transfer that essence to another item. So you can see like I'm doing here, I take the essence from the apple and transfer it to this scrunched up piece of paper. You can also extract other things to transfer like electricity. Now this is an interesting concept that really had me scratching my head trying to figure out how to solve it. I never actually did end up finishing the entire puzzle, so let me know how you go in the comment section below. Next up is Bullet Bomber. Now I don't actually know who made this one, but credit to whoever did create it, cause it was a lot of fun. In this game you have a thruster attached to each arm and you press the triggers to activate those thrusters to move around your environment, launch bombs and destroy the turrets that fire rockets at you. It includes five different levels and I found this one to be challenging and addictive, coming back each time to try to beat my previous performance. Now this game is called Number Nightmare. It was made by Drenicoda, Koi Fish and Chum Diddle. In this game you have two guns attached to your hands and your job is to shoot the numbers coming towards you with the matching number on your gun. Now you can cycle the numbers up and down using the A, B, X and Y buttons on your controller. Quite a straightforward concept but a lot of fun, very challenging and I think you'll enjoy it. Now our next game is called One Hand Many Uses. This was created by Satolus, I believe. This one uses hand tracking and the hand tracking doesn't work too well but this is of course because the author was on a very tight time schedule and they do say they've improved upon it quite a bit since they submitted it to VR Jam. Nonetheless, I love the idea. What you have to do is use your hands in different ways to destroy the objects. For those panels, you punch them. For the watermelons, you chop them. And for these ball target objects, you shoot them. 
Such an interesting concept, I really do hope we get to see the author's updated version on SideQuest at some point. Now our next game is called Dark Hunch. This won't take you long to complete, but I just love the idea. This was made by Shash King. It's a horror puzzle game and it's turn-based. What you have to do is use that camcorder to find out where the baddies are and make your way to the rightmost square to win. Like I said, it doesn't take very long at all, but I love the idea so much I really wanted to feature it in this video. Finally, last but not least, is Treasure Hunt. Now this game was made by Paley, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, and you have 10 minutes to find enough items to pay for your trip back home. You find these items using your treasure detector, and a lot of the times you find these junky sort of jars, but if you're lucky you find the rarer gems that will provide you with more money. But watch out for these strange green creatures who will attempt to steal your treasures. But luckily for you, your treasure detector doubles up as a Blaster Foe 9001, which allows you to blow these little green critters from back to where they came. And should you run out of ammo, you can also transform your gear into a Wackamator, which allows you to engage in some good old fashioned close combat. Well, that's about it from me. Seriously impressed by the talent that we see here with these games. I can't believe they developed these in just seven days. I really hope we see these games on SideQuest at some point because they really do deserve a lot more attention. If you like this video, remember to subscribe to keep up to date with the latest content and support this channel and I'll see you next time.